Welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Thursday before the Friday going into Labor Day weekend. So I'm going to cut the work a little bit short on the uh, Skookum today. Headed down to the lake with some friends and family uh, tomorrow. So this is going to be about it. I have made some progress. I've been running around. I uh, had to run down to get those skis. Um, worked on those a little bit today. But haven't done a lot to the boat. I have... Uh, talk to you a little bit more about that. I've mo finished most of the welding out of the uh, the inside of the boat, up in the bow, all that stuff is done, the transom's done, but you still have to roll the whole thing up on its side and do the side to bottom joint with the boat rolled up. So I got the boat off of those saw horses and on the ground ready to do that next. And um, as well as weld that 3 16 to 3 8 plate bottom together, that butt joint on the bottom of the boat and grind those. Then the bottom will be done and you can put the UHMW. I have not glued the pump in yet, so I'm gonna hold off on rolling the boat all the way over before until I get that pump in there. So once I put that UHMW on, it will be finished and roll it back upright. To talk a little bit, I had somebody comment about um, some welding techniques and yes i do like to hear those i applied those and i thought about them i think i i always do try to well do a uh, push technique um whenever i can if there's there's a couple little tight spots where i can't quite do that and i gotta drag the the barrel of the uh the gun and i know that that's not uh the best way to do it but there are positions and times when that's the only thing you can do so i do uh, Miller recommends a 10 to 15 degree push angle. I'll show you here in a second what that means. As well as one thing that I think I have, um, when somebody made that comment, it kind of made me think about my welding and what I've been paying more attention to is the distance of the uh, the uh, the electrode um, to the work material. There's a couple times that that gets, I let that get a little bit too long and then you're not gonna get, um, good dispersion of the argon and you're going to have a contaminated well so i worked on that a little bit here in the last couple days i think i can see an improvement uh, with that so um the other thing was the flow rates i just double checked that i was in the ballpark about 20 to 30 uh, feet per hour i think is what miller recommends so i just set my bottle right at 25 and call it good and i haven't had any issues with that other than that, um, clean, clean, clean. Can't uh, emphasize that enough. Use an acetone and a clean rag to clean before. Oh, and then uh, the other tip was, where's those? I'm gonna show. I've always just used little uh, wire we or wire brushes, and those work uh, good overall. But what uh, somebody recommended, and I don't know why I've never done this before, is just the little stainless um, wire wheels with your drill. And then just, uh, man, that sure makes uh, quick and easy work of that. So thanks for the tip on that. I don't know how I didn't think of that uh, before, but I do appreciate that tip. Uh, the other thing about those wire, I, I do a little bit of steel welding in uh, boat trailers and axles and stuff like that. You got to keep um, all those things separate. So if you use a wire brush on steel, it's done. It's only steel. Uh, you get those that little bit of uh, iron in those uh, stainless teeth and then you go essentially rubbing it into the aluminum and you're going to have contaminated wells. So I try to put a magic marker on which ones are aluminum, which ones are steel. Um, same thing with the little wire wheel and now obviously so once you do one you're kind of you're kind of committed to that uh, and that will help uh, keep those welds clean as well anyway um i will flip the phone around i'm going to talk to you a little bit about a weld out sequence um, rs racecraft their instruction manual did have a very good section on that I'm just gonna kind of verbalize it and show you on the phone how I did it. I think I did it a little bit different than their recommendations. I will, uh, I'll show you how I did it. Just gonna try to um, show you really quick what I was talking about, the, the, the push angle here. Uh, this here would be a zero angle on your gun. Uh, Miller recommends about a 10 to 15 degree push. So the angle that's coming out, you're gonna weld in this direction. Uh, for best coverage and then I think I just smushed it over but uh, the tip stick out is uh, 
I, I was having a hard time finding any hard number recommendations for that. There you go. You kind of start to see that tip sticking out a little bit there. Um, any hard numbers on how what the proper distance for your cup to your material is. Um, it's it's pretty much set off of the of where you want that um, that electrode to go into the full spray mode, and it's about I believe an eighth to a, about a quarter of an inch past uh, past right about here. So obviously right about there is where that spray is starting, and then uh, making sure that your cup is close enough that you're getting good argon protection all around that weld. To get good access to the side of the bottom weld, I just use my engine lift. Uh, the center point is pretty much right around where the center bulkhead comes into, so I just jacked that up, raised everything up, so it gave me good access to work on that um, edge to edge joint where the big side panel meets the bottom piece. Like I said, that is a 3 8 or a uh, edge to edge weld. I welded it 100% on the inside, and then what you get is a little bit of a blow through. Uh, on the weld that needs to be cleaned up and back gouged. So this is uh, this is what it looks like before, and this is what it looks like after you take that meat saw, clean that all up, 100% pure aluminum for a nice clean weld. So the weld out sequence, once you get everything tacked in, um, you always start at the stern of the boat and work forward. So like that weld right there would have been first and work your way up. I would jump back and forth between that engine bear and this engine bear. So I would, uh, for example, on this one right here, I would probably do about one, two, three, four welds on the engine bear. And then I jump over to this one over here, do the same thing, one, two, three, four welds. Um, and then jump back and do four, three or four more, kind of depending on how warm the base material is getting and then jump back over to this side to do them. Now, uh, RS Racecraft recommended doing the whole engine bear all the way up first. I, I, would go, I went about halfway and then I came back and then I started working on the longitudinal. So everything was kind of moving from the aft to the forward uh, together. And once that those, I kind of let them get about two or three skips ahead of each other and all the way up until the engine bearers were done. And then the, um, the outside longitudinals were in. Once those were in, I went ahead and did the short little welds on those lateral braces. But then um, I also, once I kind of got away from the transom, that's when I started doing the little short and cold welds on the transom. So same thing with moving aft to forward. You want to work to the inside and out. So that's uh, how I would welded that. And like I said, I did not want to get, I'll show you what I mean back here. You don't want to get this ride plate too hot. This tran this weld right here has a very, I, I've done this on my sprint boats. If you get too much heat in there, this thing is going to pull up and then your boat's not gonna ride right. Ronnie says that it will cause these things to porpoise. So those were kind of intentionally short and cold, colder welds to let that heat not get built up. And then, I'd, like I said, I do one weld or two welds, then I'd go back up to the front, come back and work my way from the center line to the outside. While I was doing that, I started working my way up the, uh, the inside of the side to bottom weld. And kind of once I caught up, then I started doing the, the other weld here that's the chine extension to the bottom plate as well. And once I got up to about where the, uh, what do you want to call it, the, the V and the bow, um, once everything moved up to that point, then I started doing all my welds finishing all the way up there. So I'd go up the, the middle about um, a foot or two, and then I'd move out to the chain extension, and then the, and everything pulled and moved forward as I went. Um, I got also got the, the kick plate or the uh, foot brace or the forward bulkhead welded in. Um, I decided I am going, I'm holding off on putting the midship bulkhead in simply because I don't think it's need, um, really necessary right now to, for strength of anything, because all the stuff has got 
bent angles. It's going to be pretty darn strong. And I just think it's going to make it easier working on the engine compartment and getting everything rigged in there. As soon as I have the motor, the pump mounted, and the motor mounted, the big ticket items, I think that's when I'm going to go ahead and weld it. And I think that that, if I remember right, that only gets welded here and a little bit on the side. So it's not like I'm going to be welding in the engine bay. Uh, the other thing for the windscreen, talked to Ronnie a little bit about this last week. Same thing, you want to want to start in the middle and work your way out and do this in uh, little chunks at a time. So I was doing about six, six inch or so uh, stitches. I'd go six inches, six inches, and then I'd jump over here and go six inches, working from the middle to the outside. And so I would do about a foot and a half to two feet of that. And then I would jump up on the rim cap there and do the exact same thing so that both parts were getting moved, were getting welded out from the center out at the same time. I didn't do this joint all the way around and then weld this. I did them together, moving from, like I said, from the center out in about six to eight inches at a time do about two of those. So you're you're going a foot to the left, foot to the right, and work your way all around. I didn't have any problems with that. I did take a break. Um, Ronnie said that if you get too much heat in here, it has a tendency to kind of pull the, uh, the bow plate down because it's kind of a big um, eighth inch plate and it had a tendency to do that. So I took my time, let that um, base material cool, and I think it uh, turned out great. I don't see any kind of concaving or anything like that at all kept those welds i'm going to these are all going to get ground just just for appearance um, some of these welds turned out really nice um, going down the sides are nice and easy welds so that's one thing about when man once you get up in the bow you're standing on your head doing overhead welds so kind of like some of these back here in the transom trying to get up in there and put some welds in there it's not exactly easy so you, it's kind of nice to get a to get a nice easy spot to to do some fancy swirls one thing i was gonna i'm contemplating doing i don't know if you can see the markings i put here in the dash i thought about cutting a cut out there and welding in a step just to make it easier to go from your seat to step up and to jump up on the bow to grab a branch or a bow line or whatever so i'd like to hear from any um particular the uh, the rs racecraft owners if uh, if you have done that or if you think it's a good idea or or maybe something you might consider doing as well i haven't decided if i'm going to do that i'm not sure once i get the floorboards in there if that will be required how big of a step that will be um, but it might just make it that much easier to do that the other thing is i got the uh the bow handles and there's two on the stern i got those in i got part of these welds ground grounded down these ones are just a quick streamer welds um because you're going to grind them down these ones came out pretty good pretty happy with overall uh with those and um got to grind the other side um the also have the handles back here on the stern how i did these in aligning sometimes i swear the the human eyeball is your best uh tool so i i kind of eyeballed this one here centered it up where it looked good and then i just lay once i did that i did the same thing over there but i just laid a straight edge across there make sure it was all um all nice and level with each other so i think that turned out Great, I, I've, I've literally done things where I sit there and measure with a micrometer and go and tack it in and go look at it and it looks crooked. So sometimes I swear uh, the human eyeball is your best tool for doing things like that, especially stepping back. Um, if you can, it's kind of hard in the garage. The, this size, if you can step back and look at things from a distance, you can really, your eye can really pick up anything that's out of balance or anything like that. Anyway, the boat's looking good. I just gotta do some family time and some lake time and we'll get back to building this thing. And uh, like I said, not much left on the bottom and we'll start mounting stuff on the inside of the boat. So getting the pump ready for install on the bottom of the boat, the three main parts here is the actual intake bars and then two wedges, one up front, one in the rear that get bolted down. 
with the nice countersunk uh, recesses for those so it's nice and flush to the bottom of the boat. Uh, took a little bit of time, not too bad. Had to uh, coerce it a little bit with the uh, mallet and then working all those bolts to get that uh, those wedges to suck down nice and tight so everything is nice and flush once it gets installed in the bottom of the boat. The other thing that I did, the next uh, upcoming picture you'll see, there is a, um, a raised, um, if you will, a part of their mold in the, in the pump. Then it's all just kind of dull. Here comes a picture right about now. I just hit that with a, with a little 3M disc pad to brighten it up just for a little bit of color. I like the way that uh, turned out. Then placing it in the, in the bottom of the boat, uh, marking it out, tape it off so you don't make a mess. I used uh, Marine Adhesive 5200. It comes in two types, a long cure and a short cure. This long cure takes seven days to fully set up. The short cure takes about six or seven hours, I believe. Here it is, finally installed. Remove the tape, nice clean uh, job with that 5200 if you ever worked with it. It gets everywhere, but it's an amazing product. So it's uh, the pump is in, boat's ready to flip over now. Do that uh, um, butt weld for the 3 8 to 3 16 and we'll show that next time. Thanks for watching.